Good morning. I'm standing on the athletics track over by the prep school. Over the weekend, my children and I found ourselves talking about the fastest runners in history. My daughter had heard about Usain Bolt and his suite of world records, the most notable of which for me was his 200 metres time of 19.19 seconds, set back in 2009. I've always enjoyed watching athletics and for some decades the Italian runner Pietro Manea's time of 19.72 set at altitude in Mexico City in 1979 seemed insurmountable. No one got close for an extraordinary amount of time and it wasn't until 1996 that Michael Johnson better the mark with a time of 19.66. When he lowered it later that year to 19.32 seconds it seemed the most remarkable athletic feat I'd ever seen. I remember the Jamaican sprinter Frankie Fredericks being made to look slow coming in second with a time of 19.68. Usain Bolt's demolition of what already seemed an absurdly quick time was as close to magic as any sporting achievement. And what we consider to be the best or unbeatable moves on. The world record for the marathon in 1908 was a shade under three hours and the time of two hours 55 minutes would barely qualify you to enter for the London Marathon this year on merit alone. Mozart, as one of the greatest composers in history, would not as a young person be regarded as particularly exceptional as an instrumentalist nowadays. The kind of pieces that we know he played as a youth would be fairly average in comparison with those played by highly trained children today. And his celebrated perfect pitch is something that can be learned. And there are countless examples of this sort of thing in every field. Black cap drivers in London, whose knowledge of the city streets and landmarks makes them more effective than any sat-nav, were not born with an extensive A to Z in their brains. It's not that the human race has, through some miracle of selective breeding, got an awful lot better at everything. It's that people have learned to be better at learning itself. And that the power of deliberate practice, of working hard in the right way, on the right things, and coached by the right people, is what enables progress. What to learn and how to learn it has been honed over the years. And we must endeavour to be smart in how we use our time. Yes, of course, we do need to work hard to succeed, but we should not mistake being busy for being productive. And your teachers, your coaches, your parents and your friends are all on this journey and they all have knowledge and experience from which you can benefit. So please listen, reflect, support and keep moving forward. The best of what has already been achieved should be no limit to you. Good morning, school. Well, it's been quite a start to the term. Uh, if you cast your mind back to kind of February time, I remember we did an assembly when I said there would be lighter, brighter, warmer days to come. Uh, and what do you know? Uh, here we are. The, the sun is shining and uh, I'm thrilled that so many of you are, are getting involved in what's been an absolutely fabulous start of term. I'm just going to take a couple of moments just to talk about some of the things uh, that have been going on. Um, I want to start by focusing on the photography competition. Mrs. Wild and the art department uh, ran a photography competition on the theme of uh, signs of spring and uh, lots of you got involved. Uh, some absolutely fantastic pictures uh, were created, some of which uh, I have for you to have a look at here. Now, our winning entry uh, was by James uh, in year nine, who put this lovely picture uh, of snowdrops uh, and the school in the background and testament uh, of a warm spring day. So well done, James. Uh, that's fantastic. Now, on Sunday, uh, we had some bronze DV training uh, within school and uh, Mr. Richie's tells me it was a really, really successful day. Uh, I think there was over 63 year 10s uh, spending the day getting involved. And I know you're going to be looking forward to your expeditions uh, which are coming up. The school has a long history uh, and tradition of uh, students getting involved in the Duke of Edinburgh uh, Award. And it's brilliant to see so many of you getting stuck in. So very, very well done. We've also had uh, some Lambda success um, and so there's some certificates which uh, I'm going to announce now and if these people want to come and see me uh, I can pass on their certificate uh, to them but obviously these uh, uh, this kind of thing doesn't just happen it takes a huge amount of, of hard work dedication of perseverance of confidence of all those things uh, so really uh, if you're one of these people that have achieved one of these uh, awards uh, then really well done so that's congratulations to Layla uh, who's got a grade six acting bronze medal at merit uh, Charlotte who's got grade four acting at merit uh, Neve uh, who's also got acting grade two that's distinction 
uh, Zane uh, has got acting grade two as well at distinction uh, and Sam uh, who's got a public speaking grade seven uh, at distinction so that's a tremendous achievement for all of those and congratulations then to Eleanor uh, who's got an acting grade three merit at distinction uh, to William who's got his verse and prose award at distinction uh, to Mirandi who's gained the acting grade six bronze medal at distinction uh, Charlotte who's also got the acting grade six bronze medal again at distinction uh, Arnav uh, the acting grade seven silver medal uh, again at a distinction uh, and Lucy who not only has got a grade two acting at distinction she's also got her grade two flute so very well done uh, to all of those that's a tremendous uh, a tremendous accolade we've also been really really busy uh, on the sports fields and it's been fabulous uh, after school and at the weekends to see so many of you uh, on site getting back playing fixtures and I know that a lot of you uh, have really missed that that competitive fixtures uh, there was a raft of uh, fixtures on Saturday uh, against Russell School I think it was well over 200 students uh, involved uh, and there was some brilliant hockey uh, being played uh, I believe we won every game um, but the the competition uh, the sportsmanship uh, and, and the talent was, was clearly evident so well done everyone involved uh, in that we've also had loads and loads of cricket fixtures going on it's been brilliant to see uh, as I say the sun has shone and it's been great to see cricket being played uh, again uh, the first uh, 11 have had uh, a couple of fixtures they started with a tough match uh, against Lancaster Grammar uh, a narrow loss and then they won uh, a dramatic last over victory uh, against Kirkham Grammar School uh, with Captain Ali Muneer uh, scoring uh, a 50. Uh, we've also had uh, a number of other fixtures um, home and away uh, against Lancaster uh, a series of matches uh, congratulations to Max Green who I think scored a uh, 50 not out uh, and there's been some really really competitive cricket and I know that Mr Castillas uh, has been absolutely delighted uh, with the commitment uh, the energy and the enthusiasm of everyone involved in that so well done everyone involved uh, and even though uh, even though it's April uh, football uh, is back we've decided not to uh, join the uh, Spurish European Super League uh, but instead have played a series of fixtures uh, against Russell um, it was great the other night to see uh, girls football being played uh, and a really really competitive uh, game resulted in a narrow loss uh, I know the under 14s I think picked up uh, a win and I think there were some really really competitive games uh, on Saturday so I think what we can see is that there's been uh, lots and lots of sport lots and lots of extracurricular activities going on I know CCF is back DV there's so much going on and uh, it's brilliant to see so many of you involved so keep keep going uh, keep working hard uh, and we'll see what the next things bring okay thanks a lot school have a great day